Hey folks, your OS reviews. You're watching our retro review of the OLPC X01. At last, we get our hands on of this Linux powered netbook, which is unique because it's the first version produced by the One Laptop Per Child Foundation. Now, this is a charity foundation originally that was uh, also you know, designed in terms of the hardware of this netbook by Mary Lo Jepson, and uh, she later founded Pixel QI, which is the company that focused on outdoor readable screens and uh, now works at Google X. Uh, as we talked about before in previous videos. But back to OLPC, uh, they were important because a few years ago they started this campaign where you could pay four to five hundred bucks and they would donate a laptop to you know a third country nation to a child who you know doesn't really have uh, laptops or maybe computers and so they could use this to hopefully inspire their learning and ultimately uh, foster more creativity as well as uh, foster a community more dedicated to becoming let's say engineers or scientists and um, people to reach their dreams and so that was quite important and in exchange the company also gave you you know one of these netbooks to play around with yourself um, otherwise this is more geared of course towards kids but uh, the, the important thing here is that it has a very rugged design and it's also very uh, energy efficient because again in some places around the world there's not constant uh, availability to let's say a power outlet so you could charge this thing up and then use it for a longer period of time than a regular laptop or a netbook there's also an additional accessory which includes a hand crank generator that you could twist just to power the unit so that's how the Low cost and uh, low energy it is and otherwise the screen here is uh, important because it's basically the first generation of that pixel qi tech which is so very compelling it's basically a two mode transfective screen that acts just like a ebook reader when you're out in the sun it becomes completely legible uh, but when you're indoors under darker environments it's just like a typical lcd screen which is backlit so it's just a very unique tech uh, pioneered by mary lo jepson for the first time here and overall she did a fantastic job with the hardware and the design of this. It isn't a touchscreen computer, but it does have a swiveling lens to put it into this pseudo tablet mode for easier ebook reading as well as for web browsing and reading text. So taking a closer look at the design here, you can see here that the unit actually remains closed fairly well. It's actually closed by two rubber antennas on either side, which you open up to then unhook and then as a result be able to open up the hinge. These two antennas are the Wi-Fi antennas and they are extremely strong in reception just because, again, it's this designed for uh, countries where you know maybe even Wi-Fi outlets as well as uh, routers are rare. So it picks up these signals quite well and there's also something unique called mesh networking on here. So it allows the other, uh, maybe if you have another device that supports this feature to connect to each other and then share information that way. So um, it's quite unique and uh, in terms of connectivity it's fully stacked. Of course in terms of processing power that's another story especially since this first generation model came out almost a decade ago now uh, back in 2006-2007. So it is outdated in that sense uh, to process our single core uh, under you know one gigahertz for sure and the RAM under one gigahertz one gigabyte so those are a few things to take in, into consideration not meant for productivity by any means uh, but it can be a cool collectible it can be a good tool still for kids to learn uh, well maybe as a first netbook or a computer so the handle on the top here is very strong and sturdy allows you to take the netbook quite easily when you're traveling LED lights on the top for wireless as well as for power there are two USB ports on the right hand spine on the left hand edge you have access to a third USB 2.0 port in addition to a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and external microphone port. There is a proprietary charging port on this side and the back just features the battery on the very back. So all the components are made out of the soft touch rubber material which makes it feel very durable and again uh, shock proof as well as dust proof. So opening this up, we have access to a membrane style keyboard. It reminds me of that uh, technically, well it's, well, it's not technically, but uh, named as the indestructible silicon keyboard. So it has that same texture. And what this means is, is that it's a spill-proof keyboard that if you pour liquid on it, if you get it dusty, it's also very simple and easy to clean off. Because this is a netbook with a, I would say, around 9-inch display on the top here, um, it is not a full-size keyboard. It's really meant for kids. It's still definitely workable. The keys are responsive and surprisingly easy to type on, but again, it's not full-size by any means. Using this for about 30 minutes, I slowly got used to it. Uh, this is what the power brick looks like. So it also had the company's logo on it, so the OLPC Foundation. And what's unique here, again, is the trackpad area 
area down below. Um, in future generation models, they wanted to also bring this into a stylus uh, component where you can also interact with it on a larger area. But on this first model, it was more of just a small trackpad you see in the center there uh, that you could use with your fingers. There's left and right keys on down below, which are pretty tactile and responsive. And the keyboard here also features uh, dedicated controls in the top to uh, accessing the OS, which is a Linux. It's actually Sugar OS that was written and developed by the OLPC team, meant to focus on uh, learning as well as productivity for kids. It's uh, really an interesting UI as well as an OS. We'll show you that later on. Um, it, it almost gives you a metaphor on uh, space as well as on colors, as well as on uh, the different apps that are, you, you are able to run. But for now, this top key here allows you to go through different things like network settings as well as go through group settings. So this allows you to see your neighborhood around you in terms of a wireless signals, connect to your own computer, and then open up back and forth between currently open apps. There's a search key over here. There's access to uh, settings for changing the volume, the brightness of the screen, and there's also the standard enter as well as arrow keys down below here. On the top we have access to that unique dual mode display which uses a matte finish uh, which is a great choice because it doesn't glare or reflect under the sun either. It makes it completely legible. Something I'm going to quickly note is that the display tech here also doesn't require you to physically press any keys. So if you're out in the sun it's automatically going to be legible. Uh, if you're back indoors in the dark it's going to be legible because the backlight will be on. So there's no other physical settings I need to go through or look for. Uh, so that's a quick clarification. Otherwise, there's access to microphones as well as a basic webcam on the top here, which is a VGA 1.1 1 .1 megapixel and allows you to do uh, some very basic uh, photos that you can take some selfies as well as a uh, basic voice and uh, video conferencing. There's also speakers on either side, so stereo speakers. These are quite loud and rich sounding. Access to a four-way navigation D-pad as well as a, as a networking key. And there's also access to a power on-off switch on the side here and also game keys, which allows you to play back a few games and apps. On. All right, so the Sugar operating system is now booting up. It takes a few moments to completely load up just because, again, the hardware on here really isn't cutting edge. So um, it's about the same boot up, I would say, time as roughly a Windows 7 computer. So if you still remember those, or a netbook from, from that age, this is about the same time. It's about one to two minutes to wait. Um, otherwise, we can directly check out the screen now that it's uh, started up. You can see that there is this backlight, so under dark environments, it still remains f uh, fully visible, just like any computer or smartphone screen. However, if we have a typical LCD panel next to it and we sh shine something such as a flashlight onto you know the screen here, it becomes very quickly kind of washed out as well as a glossy, so it becomes harder to see. Whereas on this, if I shine this light on here, it seems like it only becomes easier to read, just like an ink screen. So again, the effects of this a very interesting dual mode screen becomes easily uh, transparent as well as uh, visible. So here we have the operating system loaded up. I'm going to take a closer look next at uh, how it displays um, your applications as well as uh, going through this those various features. I found the trackpad on this to be a little bit on the finicky side of the spectrum. Sometimes it jumps around, doesn't react as well as I hope, uh, but it does work. So uh, for instance, it's an interesting operating system that uh, puts all this, all the error features as well as uh, various apps in this a circular view. And if I find something I want, I can click on it or I can use the search bar here to type on something. Again, the keyboard, despite being quite small, is quite responsive. I can also press on the list here just to create a list view of all my apps as opposed to using that circular view of uh, icons. This becomes a bit easier to navigate if you're using it for the first time and trying to figure out all the features. So if we want to check out the browser, for instance, first, we can just tap on this um, and give you guys a quick idea of uh, how the web browsing experience is like. It works, but it's really just uh, only good for text as well as articles these days just because, you know, Flash is extremely outdated. If you try to view back a YouTube video or Netflix, it just freezes up and gets a lot slow, slower than you would want, so it's not really geared for that anymore, but uh, for reading text documents, for reading articles, it still works very well, um, and, and it's perfect for that as well just because of this uh, screen, which you can take it outdoors and still enjoy articles and reading newspapers out in the sun. So it's starting to load a page here and it defaults this screen which uh, brings us to Google and you can do a quick Google search along with uh, other OLPC uh, specific websites and materials such as their Wikipedia page, their product tracker, project tracker for tracking the most up-to-date software uh, to download that as well and there's also separate categories for uh, learning educational purposes. Um, so if I want to type on a, uh, maybe let's do a quick Google search here. So let's just try searching OLPC. Tapping on enter there, it's going to wait for a few seconds for uh, it to think. 
And there we go, the full page has been loaded up. It is displaying the full desktop version of the Google site as opposed to a mobile version, which is nice to see. Um, and once again, if you have a flashlight function turned on on a phone, um, again, it becomes very transparent that the screen is still highly, highly visible. Um, whereas again, a comparable smartphone glares like crazy. And if you ever had a, a tablet such as an Apple iPad out in the sun with that glass screen, you know uh, some of the issues that, that goes on there. So um, especially if we turn off the light, and do this experiment one more time with these uh, two various types of screens. Again, this is what a typical glass screen would be like. All these smudges become instantly transparent, colors wash out, whereas on here, it's basically like a uh, e-ink display on an e-reader. It just becomes stronger and easier to read. So really quite an interesting technology being used there. So taking a closer look, again, it's not the most optimal browsing experience just because things are a little bit cluttered, but uh, it does work and you can use the navigational controls to slide up and down. You can also use the on-screen controls here to navigate the page. So something I really like to do here is if I have a page loaded up or you know a news site such as CNET or let's say the New York Times with a lot of articles I want to read, I can then fold this thing down into the tablet mode just for reading. So doing a quick demonstration of that, I'm just gonna fold the screen to the side there, so there we go, and then fold this entire hinge down, and uh, there we go. Now we can have this in a more pseudo tablet mode, even though it lacks a touchscreen on this original version for doing ebook reading. I can navigate using the cursor controls on the sides, as well as click on hyperlinks. So it is uh, a pretty enjoyable experience. Uh, the game keys here are really just dedicated for uh, gaming specific apps that were written for the platform, as opposed for web browsing. So that's something to quickly point out. Um, if you are pointing the screen directly at the sun, something you're gonna notice is it becomes a lot more, the color at least becomes a lot a lot similar to a uh, monochrome black and, black and white screen as opposed to full color. So colors are a little bit more muted, but it still is highly, highly visible in terms of text as well as documents. So if we exit out of this uh, application there, something that we can check out next is the network client. So we talked about how mesh networking was this a special feature on here with these ultra strong antennas really geared for places where you know Wi-Fi reception is weak or if there's only one Wi-Fi router available, um, this is really meant for that. And you can see here that you know your computer is, is displayed by this uh, OLPC icon and center there and everything around you in terms of the distance is mapped onto this uh, onto this graph that tells you how far you, you are away from distant Wi-Fi routers along with a mesh network. So you can see that being displayed by these around circular bullseye points. So quite a, an attractive interface being used here that is an easy way to metaphorically see uh, the various uh, Wi-Fi internet hotspots around you. You can search that and then connect to it as well. So if we exit out of this, uh, one way you can do that is actually go towards the top of the screen. So putting the cursor to the top of the screen exits that and allows you to return to the home screen, to that home page, that list of all your apps, uh, along with uh, currently open programs. Uh, down below here, there's a basic status info as well in terms of the battery life that's remaining and also sound settings that you can customize. So all in all, this is a pretty easy to understand kind of uh, OS and also skin that uh, Sugar is going for. And I think it's uh, attractive and suits the purpose of this uh, educational netbook. So if we go all the way back to the main screen there and hop back into that main view, we can check out a few other programs. So one of the other notable programs that I want to point out is uh, actually um, there is Turtle on here. So Turtle is uh, this, uh, this this application geared for uh, kids to learn maybe computer science for the first time. So there are a few other more complex apps that this thing can run. Obviously, if you're doing full-on computer science or programming, it's not going to be the most optimal thing, but it uh, is possible to do some as well as a basic coding with the blocks that you can drag up and down. So it's kind of like BYOB. Um, so again, this is the, the turtle art activity that you can tap on that uh, creates these blocks of code that you can drag and create animations with. And there's also things like a paint activity, a reading client so that you can load with your favorite eBooks. There are uh, a very basic uh, you know, picture and video viewers on here that supports quite a few Kodaks along with a few basic games. So things like Maze uh, is a good example of that that you can go through. So quite a few uh, different um, applications on here that are uh, very similar to what you might find on a very budget-oriented Android or Windows computer. So anyways guys, this has been a retro look back at the OLPC, original one laptop per child, a very interesting computer pioneered by Mary Lowe Jepsen, and hopefully you guys found this video informative as well as a fun to look back at. Thanks for watching. Here.